I wanted to share an update with you, but you'll have to excuse my voice. I had a little bit of laryngitis over the past few days, and my voice has been strained, to say the least. But after my time of hitting rock bottom, God sent extra comforts our way to help me recover and rebuild my faith. However, going through that experience was harder for me than I ever expected. The memory of the night in the car and being so disappointed was like a wound and I was being attacked. I battled so much doubt and fear afterwards. And the moment that things looked like they would go low again, I panicked and I went on my blog and asked for help. However, God was showing me that He wanted me to lean into His promise by faith and that by doing that, I was acting out of fear and doubt in that moment. After going through something so terrifying, I was really hurting and struggling to have faith like before. I felt like I had nothing left and I didn't want to do this anymore. I just couldn't muster myself to even want to believe at that point. I didn't want to go through that same pain again. I didn't want to face that fear again. I never wanted to go through that experience again and I was so crippled by fear by that point that I just couldn't even believe anymore. But God was so loving and gracious with me despite my weakness. And he comforted us with plenty to cover our room and other needs. And I was ready to be done with it all. But God was wanting me to move back into faith and to trust in his promises. He kept reminding me of all that he promised us. And he was encouraging me to fall in love with the dream he had given me all over again. Eventually I peeled myself off the dirty ground and... I came back to following God on this journey. God lifted us back up and I had paid several days on our room and replenished many needs and I was finally recovering from the shock of hitting rock bottom. My faith was coming back to a good place and thriving again. But the wound wasn't healed, not all the way. And one of the things that God had me do so many times is to sow into our future needs by helping someone else who is in need. And that's what happened next. I felt amazing from the time of respite that God had given us and our room had been well covered and is still covered for a few more days. I still had $500 left over on my card to cover the next reservation that I needed for our hotel, plus the food for a few days too. I was comfortable and ready to kick back and enjoy some time of writing with the Lord. However, God had other plans. He wanted to teach me a big lesson about love and trust and to take me back through that wound to heal it. There was a very precious woman who had sent me five dollars out of nowhere. And when I wrote her to express my gratitude, she revealed that she was sowing that as a seed to God for a miracle she needed. I could have left it there and said okay, but God was leading me to probe a little deeper into her miracle needs. It turned out she had been praying to God for a miracle need for five hundred dollars. It was something that was so deeply needed for her. Immediately, God started to nudge me to release the 500 I had to this woman as an act of faith and trust in God to cover my needs as well. God was telling me that if I had the power to help someone, then I should do it unselfishly and trust Him to cover me when I was needing help as well. My next room reservation was two days away at the time, and I had planned to use the $500 for our needs. However, God was asking me to deny myself, give up my needs to sow a seed of love for this woman and her child. 
and God kept singing the song, sowing the seeds of love. And I was in a valley of decision. Could I really trust God to cover us with something so big? Could I really put this woman's needs above the needs of myself and my daughter? Wow. I was being pressed beyond anything I'd ever known. The thing is, I cannot tell God no. I've already given him my heart and there's no going back. So I dove in and I canceled my reservation and I gave this woman my $500 and it felt like I had committed suicide. Suddenly I was falling and I needed a hero and every part of my life was stretched out onto the altar of God's promise to support and cover our needs. I chose the path of love and it was the hardest thing I'd ever done. The morning arrived too soon for our reservation to end and I was waiting for God to rescue us like he promised. I kept watching as I packed the car up but nothing was happening. So I went back and I drove to the same place where I parked the car when I hit rock bottom. And I waited on God to save me. And it felt like I was reliving my worst nightmare all over again. God kept telling me he would send a love rescue. But I didn't realize how scary it would be to wait for it. I was just about to crumble. And I had already secretly released my tears. Then out of nowhere, God sent me $500 for our miracle needs as well. God replaced what I released out of a sacrifice of love, and we went to a new hotel, and it was even better. And they even cooked us a hot breakfast in the morning. It was really good. (laughs) It was a miracle moment to see the seeds of love cover the needs of my friend and the needs of my family as well. It was the best feeling to see her so happy and then to have God cover our needs as well. I don't think that this is the end of this story either because God keeps showing me that seeds of love are always multiplied back to us like dandelion seeds that scatter in so many directions. We are already approaching a new miracle need for our room and food to be covered, and I truly believe that God will use those love seeds to cover our miracle needs again. I learned through this experience that to love others as you love yourself means putting their needs above your own and trusting God's love to cover us just as much. It's easy to give a love seed with the little bits that are left over, but it takes real love to give out of our own needs and to put someone else first. It's like the widow who gave Elijah the last bit of her oil to bake some bread. Her sacrifice of love and trust to God caused her to receive a blessing a multiplication that saved her and her child. And I'm hoping that God does the same for us as well. A sacrifice is laying ourselves down in complete surrender to what God promised and trusting His love to be there to catch us. It's an offering of true love. And love is unfailing. That was the hardest and most rewarding faith risk that God has ever led me to take. It was a risk that challenged the fear and doubt that was attacking my mind. I didn't realize that God would heal me in such a way. My healing came through facing my fears and exposing myself to be vulnerable enough for God's love to replace my fears. To heal a wound is a touch with love which was previously touched by fear. And also, I want to share out of uh, Mark 12 of 30 and 31, this very special promise from God and, well, command for us. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and life, 
with all your mind, thought, and understanding, and with all your strength. And this is the second. You shall unselfishly love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Thank you for taking this journey with me. And I hope I can share a new update soon on how God delivered the next miracle to cover our room for the morning. Sending love to you and yours from me and mine. If you would like to read or know more about a journey and keep up on all the intimate details of our story or read the love promises from God that he has me write, come see me at diamondsfromthedust.com. This is Danette. Love you so much. Bye.